assalamu alaikum students and today we will learn about the seed structure its type and uh, seed germination contents uh, to be covered are what is seed uh, part of seeds and then uh, we'll explain seed structure and types of seeds and then we will discuss about the seed dispersal next we'll talk about the uh, seed dormancy and uh, the factors responsible for dormancy of seed. Uh, next, uh, we will also talk about uh, the conditions needed for the seed to germinate. And at the end, we'll discuss about the types of seed germination. From this lecture, our students will understand the seed structure, germination of seeds, and the conditions needed for seed to germinate and factors responsible for the dormancy of seeds. What is seed? A seed is a small embryonic plant enclosed in a covering called the seed coat, usually with some stored food. Actually, a seed contains an embryo or tiny living plant, store food and seed coat. The store food, which may be in the form of carbohydrates, fat and protein, nourishes the young plant from the time it starts to grow until it can produce its own food by photosynthesis. The region in which food is stored may vary with different seeds. Seed coat covers the seed and protects it from drying up before it germinates. Let's discuss about the seed structure. The first uh, structure is panaculus. A typical uh, dicot seed remains attached uh, to the fruit wall by a short stalk known as panaculus. Helum, the scar on a seed marking the point of attachment to its seed to the base. Micropyle, it is a tiny um, body that is situated close to the helum. It helps in absorbing water to facilitate germination and allows the diffusion of respiratory gases. Seed coat, the outer covering of seed is called the seed coat. It develops from the entanglement of the ovule. The seed coat is made up of two layers, the inner and outer. An outer testa, which is hard, thick, and leathery, whereas an inner tegment, which is thin, membranous, and papery. On removing the seed coat, the embryo is exposed. So, what is embryo? Embryo is actually fertilized ovule, an immature plant from which a new plant will grow under proper condition. The next part is fumule. The shoot tip with a pair of miniature leaves or embryonic shoot is called fumule. Base of fumule is called as the epicotyle. It is the region of a seedling stem above the stalk of the seed leaves of an embryo plant. It grows rapidly showing hypogeal germination and extend the stem above the soil surface. The hypocotyle is the stem of germinating seedling found below the coccygeal and above the radical. So what is radical? Radical is the part of the seed where the root develops. The pumule, epicotyle, hypocotyle and the radical form the embryonic axis or we call it tegulum. Thus, the embryonic axis and the cotyledon together constitute the embryo or the baby plant, which is the essential part of a seed. Next part is cotyledon. Cotyledon is the first leaf that germinates. It is filled with stored food that the plant uses before photosynthesis. Remember, the number of cotyledons present is one of the most important feature used by botanists to classify the flowering plants. Species with one cotyledon are called monocots, while plants with two embryonic leaves are called dicots. 
There are two types of seeds, endospermic seeds and non-endospermic seeds. Endospermic seeds are those that have an endosperm in the mature seed. It is fleshy, oily, surrounds the embryo and function as the sole food storage organ. Inside the seed coat are thin and heavily cotyledon is present. Monopod plants have endospermic seeds. Example are maize, wheat, etc. Next type is non endospermic seed. They do not have an endosperm in the mature seed. Remember, the cotyledon are thick and fleshy and function as the sole food storage organ. Dicot plants have non endospermic seeds. Example is broad bean. Seed dispersal is an adaptive mechanism in all seed bearing plants participating in the movement or transport of seeds away from their parent plants for germination. Why seed needs dispersal? Because to spread out and grow in new places and to get sufficient space, light, nutrients for propagation. So how this dispersal occurs? Actually seeds lack power of locomotion, so are dependent on external agencies for dispersal. Agencies involved by plant in itself or by external agencies. The plant disperses their seed by itself is called autochore. Plant disperses seeds by bursting with a sudden jerk. In that case, the fruit gets ripened. It shoots out its seeds into external environment. The process may also term as explosive mechanism. This type of seed dispersal is mainly seen in those plants having pores, for example, pea, beans, etc. Let's discuss uh, about the seed dispersal uh, through external agencies. Some seeds are dispersed through wind. These seeds have wing-like structure that increase their surface area or are extremely light and hence flow away the wind. Examples include milkweed and maple seeds etc. Some seeds are dispersed by water. These uh, fruits or seeds usually develop floating ability in form of spongy or a porous or fibrous outer coat, example coconut. There are different ways in which animals and birds disperse the, the seeds. These are spiny seeds with hooks you can see in the picture. They get attached to the body of animals and are carried to distant places, example xanthium and uranium. 